Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel for episode 11 of Bumbling Through Birthright, the campaign and slash episodes where I recap what we're doing in Birthright. It's, I, it's bumbling for a reason. <laughs> not caught up on what's going on make sure you check out the link down below just as a quick recap the last thing that happened in the last session was Vardigan our ambassador from the bandit kingdom sent us ravens and was like I'm in Iver which is it isn't the capital but it's where the king stays people here are getting food because apparently the entire province or country is starving but they're not disseminating the food elsewhere also King Fulgar won't take an audience with me and there's tons of ravens going back and forth, and I think he's up to something. Which I'm absolutely sure that he is, because he's crafty, that one. So for this session, there were four of us at the table, as kind of is always the case. We never seem to get to have more than four at the table. And those four were Brindis, Jan, Roz, and Valkyrie. I believe it was last session, I'm not 100% sure, but Valkyrie rolled a complication on her downtime week and it's coming back to haunt her now. So she's trying to learn Karamul, which is like the language of the dwarf, so she can understand this really cool bow and arrow that she got. Well, I guess just the bow, because it can like warn you if you speak the language. And so her tutor, who she had had up in a place, I don't remember where that was, Vikinger? I think it was the other country. Anyway, he sends her a letter and says, listen, there's a Dosani assassin coming up this way, I think. He's got a contract. He's not gonna give it up until he completes it. So I really need you to kill him before he can complete this contract. And Valkyrie does feel obliged to do that because, you know, he was helping teach her this and he can also help her find other people in Hollingholm and to teach her. So we need to go out and figure out where this guy is. So we find out where this Dosani is staying. Apparently his name is Black John because he's evil. I don't know. Anyway, so we go to the place that he's staying. He's staying on the fourth floor. We scope, we do a little bit of recon and Jan decides to crawl up on the outside to the balconies because it's like a really fancy place and he's gonna go in through the balcony door. This guy's pretty powerful, not gonna lie. So basically we burst through the door and by we, I mean, I think it was mostly Val because we all know Roz does not get involved in fights unless he absolutely has to and Brindis the queen kind of also stays a little bit out of it but we burst open the door and Roz shoots a lightning bolt through which is great because it's probably not gonna catch things on fire because it's just gonna go straight out and then Jan is like oh the fight started because the entire door just shot past me but like I said he was pretty powerful so that was a good attack but then it kind of <laughs> Val went down pretty quickly because I think he focused on her because she was kind of the first person to run into the room and Jan burst in through the back door got hit too but we eventually took him out it wasn't pretty but it happened I want to say that Jan managed to pierce him through the heart and took the blood points, but I'm not 100% sure. But I, I only think that because this is what happens to Val all the time. She gets like some enemy that she has to fight and Jan stabs him in the heart and takes the blood points. Opportunist. So after that, it is time to do a domain turn. And this is the first time that Roz has a holding. If you remember a couple sessions ago, Roz managed to get a source. And so now that Roz has that source, Roz wants to build a ley line because if you have a ley line, you can get way more power. And the best place to run this ley line to is Dankmar because it's a swamp, so there's no population. So the way it kind of works out, I'm not 100% sure, but you've got two values for the province or whatnot and so the first value is the population and the second value is the level so I think like hauling a home in the province that that's in it's like a two and a three or a three and a three so it's like maxed out you can't there's nowhere to go from there you're not gonna get a lot of power you're not gonna get anything so why why but Dankmar is a zero and an eight so it's a level eight and there isn't enough population there to cause any problems so Roz just got super powerful and Brindis definitely helped out cover a little bit of the cost because it is expensive it's like a gold bar per province you have to cross and I think I had to cross two provinces so Brindis paid for a little bit of that also offered some regency points to make sure that there was no complication so now Roz has a holding and a ley line to a level eight source awesome Jan took the time to do a little bit of espionage kind of see what's going on around 
the province. Val finished learning caramel, so now she can understand her bow, which is pretty awesome because the bow can be like, hey, this is going on, and nobody can get the jump on you anymore. Back when we were playing in Planescape, I had a very similar weapon that would just be like, hey, sup, there's something over here. Look, look, so you could never get surprised, which was awesome, and it actually saved our lives a few times. And then the queen, Brenda, spends her time leveling up a province because, you know, she's gotta rule her country every once in a while. And she also paid us all a gold bar, which is amazing, because it's like 2,000 gold. Yeah, this rich wizard is rich and a wizard. After that, it wasn't petitioners, but it was correspondence. So the first raven that shows up is from the north, and they're saying the trees, the logs, whatever, that we have made this trade partnership with in the country over, they've started to arrive, so the wall is starting to get rebuilt, which is great. Even though they say they don't need a wall there, just better to have the wall. Next, Niorna, who is like the 13-year-old seer up in Vikinger that we had just come across, sends us a letter as well and says, I know, Roz, that you are interested in hearing about these things. I just had a vision about a really powerful sword that's underneath your city. I don't know, maybe you want to look into it. And obviously, we want to look into it. Awesome. And one of the other things that she sent in that letter was look for the questioning door. So where do we go? We go to the Smarty Pants Gang. And if you don't remember who the Smarty Pants Gang is, you'd have to go like well back into like one of the first episodes from Bumbling Through Birthright. But basically, it was a group of street kids that Roz kind of befriended slash was good old Grandpa Roz too. So he brings them food and he gives them money and helps them get new clothes and make the warehouse they're living in, which Val bought, better. And so that's what he does this time. Gotta, gotta feed the kids, gotta make sure they're good. He taught them how to read, which is great because if they know how to read, they can get us more information. And pretty much anytime we need information, if we go to the Smarty Pants kids, they generally have at least some sort of idea what we're looking for. And they do, in fact, know where this questioning door is. They say that it is in the sewer underneath of Druid Park, but they also say don't go there because these weird, evil, creepy monsters have shown up there ever since winter set in. But you know, we, I mean, we're pretty powerful. Let's just go. This could be a terrible idea. So we go down to the sewers, and as we're walking along, so it's like the water's in the middle, and there's a walkway on the side and a walkway on the side, and as we're walking along, these two things jump out of the water between Jan and Val, and meanwhile, Brindis and Roz are in the back, and like Roz straight up just like grabs Brindis and is like, save me! <laughs> because even though Brindis is the queen, Brindis isn't as squishy as Roz is, and so Brindis has taken it upon herself, and Roz kind of, you know, lets this happen, to be Roz's protector, because there have been a couple times where our two, you know, more rough and tumble people, Jan and Val, have gone down, and Brindis has straight up stepped in front of Roz, to make sure that Roz can get his spells off. That's a queen you want. So these creatures are like fish creatures, also known as swagons, and they kind of suck a lot. Like they, it's, it's a bit of a rough battle, especially when two more jump out by the squishy wizard and the queen, but we do take them down, so that's awesome. No more show up after that, so we're able to continue on to the questioning door. And when we get to the door, we realize that by questioning door, it means it's a riddle. And the riddle is, the more you take, the more you leave behind. So like we sat here and we're like, is it this? Could it be this? Could it be this? And Brenda said footprints, it was footsteps. You know, the more footsteps you take, the more footsteps you leave behind. And so the door wasn't about somatic, so it opened. It opens into this giant room, it's like 15 by 15. There's a sarcophagus in the middle. And it turns out that we've come across the final resting place of Queen Holly, who was, you know, kind of back in the day. So what do you do when you come across a sarcophagus? Obviously you open it, and we open it up, and there's like a really decrepit, basically, dust skeleton, but there's this really nice sea axe, uh, which is a sword. And so Val picks it up, and as she's holding it, Queen Holly like appears as a spirit form just to her, and so she drops it. And then Jan picks it up, and he drops it, and then Brindis picks it up, she manages to make this con save, and so she's able to have this conversation with Queen Holly. So Queen Holly says, this here is my CX, his name is Frostbreaker, or I guess her name is Frostbreaker, its name is Frostbreaker, and I used it to kill all the ice Jotuns in my country, except for one, and I really, it would be great if you could go kill it, and if you can kill it, I will unlock the really cool powers that this CX has, and I can rest peacefully. So we're like, yeah, okay, we give the sword to Valkyrie, because she's more adept to using that type of weapon, and we go on our way. We leave the sewer. 
There's a few other things that we want to do other than just go straight up fight an Ice Jotun, so we decide that we want to go up to Otter's Cloud Forge because Olok the dragon, who's not actually a dragon, we tried. We like prodded him and poked him and made jokes about the entire time. Not actually a dragon. But he said if we went up to Otter's Cloud Forge and found the dragon that was there, or at least you know, checked it out and let him know if there was a dragon or if there wasn't, then he would let us in on some magic secrets or whatever. I can't remember exactly what it was. Also, he had a really cool mask that was like a dragon mask and Roz just really wants one of these. This is the only reason Roz wants to go is so then he could be like, okay, no dragon, give me a dragon mask. So in order to get up there, we could walk, obviously, but Roz does have that right spell that lets you travel 125 miles, or well, it's 25 miles per level. So at this point at level five, it's 125 miles. But Roz is getting super low on healing potions because we've kind of been going through them quite a bit. So Roz needs to focus on that. But Brindis, as another caster, can cast this spell. So Roz spends the week making potions and Brindis starts to work on this right spell. Val, meanwhile, goes bounty hunting and Jan is out there sourcing some like night vision goggles because when we went down to the sewers, obviously we couldn't have open flame because things might blow up. So he wants to find some goggles that will help him see it at night so we don't have to rely so heavily on other light sources. Well, Roz is a much better caster than Brindis and Roz has cast the spell before so things don't go so well. Also, because Brindis is trying to land on a specific place at the top of Otter's Cloud Forge. And I think it'd be one thing if you'd been there before, but we haven't been there before. So there was a roll involved, and I think you had to make like 30%. So on a D100, roll over 30 or roll over 33. Brindis rolls under 33, which is like so low, it's like 10. She gets like 10. It's like major mishap. Like 15 times. Maybe not that much, but it was stupid. Every time you come out of the portal, you take damage, and you roll, and then you go through the next one. And like pr four or five times, probably, Roz is dead super quick, be or unconscious, because <laughs> Roz has like 29 hit points. It's, you know, so squishy. Um, Val manages to take a health potion. I think Jan did as well, but it's just, it's not going well. And by the time we finally get up to Otter's Cloud Forge, like basically with her last conscious effort, Brindis manages to get us there and then we're just all out. Like total party unconscious. Hopefully we can all make our death saves, right? Well, not quite. Because it turns out there is a dragon up at Otter's Cloud Forge. And it also turns out that Olok was a dragon. We knew it. <laughs> we, we made so many jokes about it at the time, like, that it's just like a dragon's neck sticking in through the side of the hut with like a cloak on it, but the rest of the dragon's outside. So Olok was actually a dragon all along. He revives us and he was basically like, I just want to see if you guys could get up here. If you get up here, then obviously you're worthy of being here and of knowing that I'm a dragon. We talk a little bit about the White Witch, who he also hates. He's been like stealing her sources, so like running ley lines into her provinces and stealing as much power as he can but he's not ready to go straight up against her and he figures, you know, humans kind of got to deal with something by themselves every once in a while. But you know, he has been crafting up on his mountain because why not? And he's discovered gunpowder and he's also made a gun. It's Wartooth the Musket. And so he gives it to Jan because Jan is like super stoked about this. I think he's more stoked about the gunpowder and the possibility of selling it because Jan is all about this. But now we have a gun and that's kind of cool. And then Olok agrees to transform himself into his dragon form and kind of fly us down to the nearest city because we're all hurt and real bad and we could do a long rest up here but there's really nothing much to do up here. So the town that he drops us off in is called Anorbi but it wasn't always called that and this is actually where Val grew up and her grandfather who was the Jarl has passed and now her mother is the Jarl and Val left because she was involved in a battle that didn't go well and she felt really terrible and really bad about it and took I think a lot of stigma from the town so she left and she hasn't been back since so she's not so sure that her mother is going to welcome her with open arms but that is where we end it that session if you did enjoy it make sure you hit the like button down below and subscribe so you'll know when I post the next one thanks for watching and I'll see you next time <laughs>